the 100th Psalm says, Shout out praises to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with joy. Enter his presence with joyful singing. Proclaim that the Lord is God. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give him thanks. Praise his name. For the Lord is good. His loyal love endures. And he is faithful through all generations. Welcome to Greater Cleve Church. now stand and honor God as we affirm our faith together. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let us unite in this historic confession of the Christian faith. Saints of God, what is it that we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 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 Let us pray. God, we love you and we thank you. Lord, we understand and know the seriousness of illnesses around us. But teach us out of this message, out of this lesson, how we can become engaged, how we can become concerned with our brother and our sister who are next to us. Help us not to be self-centered with this gospel but help us, God, to learn how to respond when crises arise. We say thank you, God, that you would empower us, that you would lift us to a place to where we might be able, Lord God, to be agents of your grace, that we can go forward, Lord God, and show others what it's like to truly experience the power of Jesus Christ. So thank you, Lord, that you would minister to us. Remove this matter of man. Lord God, place your spirit here without you, Lord. I, I'm just talking. I'm just speaking, Lord. But with you, power, Lord God, your anointing moves forward. And so, God, we say thank you. We bless you, Lord, that you would lead us, Lord, into righteousness and understanding. This is our prayer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen giving honor to God who is my father, to my big brother, Jesus Christ, and to the comfort of my life, the Holy Spirit, I greet you in the name of him who keeps us from falling. I want to uh, look at the, phys the physician's gospel, St. Luke. There in, in, this, in this eighth chapter of Luke, there is a pericope of text, a small portion of, of text that we want to extract and we want to digest this text for our lesson today. Luke 8 starting at verse 40. <clears throat> it says this, now when Jesus returned a crowd welcomed him for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus synagogue leader came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to the house because his only daughter, a girl of about 12 years old, was dying. As Jesus went on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. Verse 43, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. 
I love the theme that Mark is using here with the number 12. But no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak and immediately her bleeding stopped. Verse 46, who touched me? Excuse me, 45, who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Jesus, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, somebody touched me. I know that because power has gone out from me. Verse 47, then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at Jesus' feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. For a sermonic thought, I would like to share from the subject matter when community responds to crisis. When community responds to crisis. This story found in the Synoptic Gospels, and, and you have to know that, that this story is actually recorded in all three Gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke's Gospel give us a familiar account of this event in history. It's a story of redemption. It's a story of reconcile. It's a story of hope that, that at some point we can all embrace and identify with. If nothing else, this story is just a reminder that we are not to give up in our fight. And, and, and I'm quite sure, like, like some of you, amen, you might not, you might not want to tell everyone, but at some place in your journey, you've had to fight, amen. You, and and not, not a, a physical, you know, balling up your knuckles, amen, putting on a gear, amen, uh, greasing your face down with Vaseline, taking your earrings off kind of stuff, but, but, but you've been in some type of struggle that's taken place over your life. You might be at a point right now, even as I'm speaking in this moment, you might be fighting with some issue. You might be fighting with some illness. There might be something that's on your mind that you cannot get it off of your mind, but you're in a fight. I want to encourage you today, simply say to you to stay in the fight. You know, when I was a kid, we, if a kid was bigger than me, and if we got the fight, and I tried to get out of the fight. I tried to find room to escape the fight. Your struggle might seem bigger than you, amen. The, the place where you are might seem like it's winning right now, but I want to encourage you to stay in the fight. Hopefully, this message will give you some staying power, amen, some, some ability to stay, amen, so that you can not lose hope in your ability to believe in God's word. But here in our text today, we have Jesus in the middle of accomplishing kingdom ministry. Jesus has healed a man from Gadarene uh, who was possessed with a demonic spirit. And now Jesus has sailed back across the Galilean Sea. And he's back on the shores, amen, in the region of, of Galilee. You got to know, saints of God, that, that Jesus' is travel, when, when he's getting ready to go to his next mission, it wasn't just a few minutes down the street, amen, but, but Jesus would travel as, as many as nine and ten miles a day, amen, just to uh, make ministry efforts happen in the region of Galilee. And so as he reaches on this coast of Galilee, as he gets off of the boat, the Bible says that there were people anticipating his arrival. At that point, Jesus began to teach. And as he's teaching, a ruler of the synagogues by the name of Jairus comes to Jesus on behalf of his 12-year-old dying daughter. Jesus 
stops teaching and and he agrees to go with Jairus to see about this little girl and while Jesus is on his way to journey to see this girl he has an experience like none other that he's ever seen or that we've ever seen in the Bible Jesus is touched I know we say that about some of our family members that they're touched Jesus is touched. And you might say, yeah, pastor, even Peter agreed that there were many people pressing on Jesus, but it ain't that kind of touch. Jesus is touched like he's never been touched before. A woman who had been dealing with an issue of blood. Saints of God, she'd been hemorrhaging for, for 12 years. She touched Jesus to the place To where the Bible says, Jesus responded that I know I've been touched because virtue has gone from me. That word virtue, we've been dealing with that on Wednesday night. It's the same word that talks about dunamis power. Amen. Dynamite power. Amen. Power that is explosive. Power, amen, that that, that can cause havoc. Jesus says, dynamite went from out of me. At this touch, Jesus says, power left me. Something happened in me that normally doesn't happen. The same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead, Jesus says, that power went out of me. She touched Jesus, and dunamis flowed out of him. She did something in the history of humankind that no one else has ever been able to do. Jesus has always authorized power leaving from him, but this time, Jesus is touched unauthorized. This time, power leaves without Jesus knowing about it. Jesus doesn't give permission for this power to flow out of him, yet when she touches him, she releases the power that is within him. Bible says that she said if I can only believe to just get close enough to him if I touch him I know that I'll be healed this is a story of redemption and it speaks volume to the challenges that are faced in our society today it speaks volume to the many challenges that many of us have to deal with on a daily basis just like this woman of 12 years this woman who had been dealing with this issue for 12 long years her story had had not been told their stories are often cast off their stories are often as unimportant their stories are often deemed unnecessary to those of us who don't have to deal with it but her story is important and, and, and even though this woman's story is important, she's not the main focus of today's message. She's not, the, she's not the one that I really want to talk about. She's not the real issue at hand. Most times when this message, can I teach for just a second? I got about another hour, right? And I'm, okay. When this message is preached or teached, uh, uh, taught, amen, we focus so much on the woman in the text. And I would offer that, that you're right to, to focus on her because this woman, like so many women in the Bible, their names, uh, 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 their names are never told, amen. They, they go nameless. They, they're without identity. They, their stories are blended as a, as a portion of a, larger, of a larger picture. Often their stories lose their own individual importance. This lady, her, her auntie had been in town for 12 years. Y'all, y'all hope y'all catching that. Some of you ladies might have caught that. But, 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 but auntie's been, a, been around for a long time. And she's been going to doctors, amen. She's been trying to search for answers. And and she's now at the point of desperation. She's going to the doctors and, and she's asked the doctors for advice. 
Mark tells us, I believe it's Mark that says to us, she has spent all of her money. And after spending all of her money on doctor's advice, she's still left with her problems. She still has no answers to her problems. Mark informs us that instead of getting better, her condition is getting worse. I don't want to minimize, saints of God, or even try to reduce this woman's story any more than what the gospel writer already does. Yet in the midst of this lady's struggle, we fail to see the responsibility of the community. The Bible tells us that there were many people around Jesus. But for some strange reason, this woman has to fight and grapple against the odds just to get to her blessing. And I'm not suggesting here, saints of God, that, 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 that every now and then you don't have to fight. I'm not suggesting that, that, that life is supposed to be easy all the time for us who believe in the Lord. However, we should not have to fight the world and the church just to get to Jesus. Now watch this. Some people like to really make this story more dramatic than what it really is. We, we like to put this lady on the ground. We like to make her crawl in on the floor. We, we like to say that she, that she was pressing her way through the crowd. She was just struggling. She was moving people's legs out of the way, trying to get to Jesus. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't ever put her on the ground. Saints, the, the, the lady was walking. Watch this. She's not on the ground, saints of God, but, but, but somehow she fights through the crowd to touch Jesus' garment. Now, I know it sounds really good to put this lady on the ground. It, it, it sounds really wonderful and encouraging. It, it, it solidifies her determination and, and her resilience to get to Jesus, but, but, but she's not on the ground. I, I would offer to us, saints of God, that this woman has had to disguise herself. Maybe she had to put on some extra makeup to hide that, that hit that, that she took, or, or, or maybe uh, she had to dress in a way that, that doesn't quite look normal. Amen? It, see, it doesn't identify her. Maybe she's had to put on a disguise and she's had to make her way through the crowd so the crowd would not recognize her. She's standing up and she's walking just like everybody else, but she's covered that so that so that no one else will know who she is. See, watch this. According to the law, saints of God, when a when a woman had an issue of bleeding, she was con she was condemned and she was considered unclean. And, and if she came in contact with anybody, amen, they would also be considered unclean and would not be allowed to participate in society. So she has to put on a disguise. How many folk around you have to disguise their pain? How many people around you have to disguise their hurt? How many people in our church have to disguise? their issues because they don't want to be judged by others. How many people have to come to church and fake a smile? How many people have to come to church and fake a praise because the people who are surrounding them will talk about them if they know their business? She has to put on a disguise. And as, 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 un, as uncomfortable as that may be for her, she has to disguise herself in order to fit in. Now think about this for a moment. If somebody was crawling around on the ground in our society today, if we were all out together and somebody was crawling between your legs, wouldn't you think that was strange? Wouldn't you think that to be kind of odd? She's not crawling, but she's disguised. <laughs> Maybe she put on some man's clothing, put a cap on, so she would look like another man or a boy. But, but she has disguised herself. This is what the Bible does say. She touched the fringe, the border 
of Jesus' garment. I know we like to say him. See, we've gotten so accustomed to him being at the bottom. But the Bible says that she walks up to Jesus and touches his garment. The Bible isn't specific as to what portion, uh, where the, you know, what portion of the garment that she touches. But we know that this lady touches Jesus' garment. Yet when she touched him, something special took place. If you would allow me to just speak for her for a moment, I believe Sister Girl would tell us that she'd had enough of her situation. Sister Girl would let us know that she wanted some relief and she was willing to take any measure to receive what she needed from Jesus. She believed that just touching his thread, not his body, but just his thread, was enough to receive the healing that she needed. Yet in all of this, saints of God, the community that's around her did nothing to assist her in this endeavor. According to the law, this woman was unclean. She had no right to mix with society. She had no right to be in the middle of the crowd. The crowd knew who she was. The crowd knew who was present before them. They, they knew and they had seen the many miracles. They knew who Jesus was. They had seen the many miracles that Jesus performed, yet they didn't put two and two together. This woman who has an issue and our Jesus, who is able to resolve the issue. They didn't put two and two together to say we need to get her to Jesus. Isn't it interesting that one had an issue of blood? And one, one's blood was able to cure the other issue of blood. It's by Jesus' blood that her issue of blood would have been resolved. Yet the crowd did nothing to bring these two together. Matter of fact, saints of God, the crowd pressed upon Jesus, shut this lady out so that she's not able to get next to the master. The Bible says that they pressed upon Jesus, and I would add here, saints of God, that they are pressing on him for selfish gain. And they pressed on Jesus to the place to where they were blocking anyone else in need from, ex from accessing his presence. And I ask us the question today, saints of God, is the church becoming a hindrance to others from getting to Jesus? Are we escorting people to the excellency of his divine majesty or are we blocking others from getting their blessings? The crowd ostracized this woman. They made her feel less than a woman. They made her feel less than a human being. They were so locked into tradition. How many of us are locked into our books? Amen. We're so locked into tradition and into law that, we, that we're not willing to give vent to a fresh wind of God's Holy Spirit. Are we causing folk to be, to be less and to feel less than, less than their worth because, because of how we treat them in our own self-righteousness? Isn't it of interest, of interest saints of God, that out of all these people pressing on Jesus, out of all of these people pushing up on the master, it isn't until this woman touches him, it isn't until this woman grabs the rim, the edge of his garment, that he recognizes that something has left him. And this is a word for, for those of us who, who might be struggling right now. Just because uh, people have a position and, and just because people are in places of authority and appear to be closer to the Lord, there are some people who really seem like they are just really close to the Lord. They, they, they just seem like they are on the very next step to glory. And they might make you feel like, like you are so far away from God just because it looks that way. Sometimes the, the way that things look ain't always what it is, amen? Uh, 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 just because it looked like they got some type of rank over you, it doesn't mean, say to God, that you are the least of these. You might be sick in your body. You might be challenged with a physical illness. 
and there may be somebody that's around you who's healthy, who, who's able to walk and run and do all of those great things. It, it doesn't mean that, that God is not, that, that God is not, a, a, that God doesn't love you any more, any less. You know, we, 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 we declare our blessings based on what we see. I looked at my hands, my hands looked new, I looked at my feet, my feet did too. I'm so glad that the Lord gave me feet to walk. What about the person that doesn't have feet to walk? Are we suggesting that we are more blessed than they are? But we're all blessed. God loves all of us. And God sees all of us the same as his children. Just because I have something and you don't, that, and, and you don't, does not declare that the Lord loves me any more than the Lord loves you. The community did nothing to get this woman to Jesus. As a community of faith, saints of God, we have to be agents of grace that would open the way of opportunity for others to see Jesus for themselves. I believe this nameless woman had resolved in her spirit. She was not ready to die. She came face to face with her reality. And she declared that if she could just touch the master, if she could just make her way to Jesus, she'd be healed. I don't know what you might be struggling with this morning, saints of God. But I want to encourage you on today, keep pressing your way to Jesus. The crowd might be pushing you away, but when the crowd pushes you away, learn how to push back and squeeze your way through the chaos. Do whatever it takes to find your way to Jesus. And for those of us who have been called into this thing of community, we have to know and understand that the Lord is looking for us to be the gateway to his redemptive power. God is looking to use you and to use me as a community to show God's love and God's grace to those who are in need. We have to be a people who will fight against the odds. We have to be a people who will fight to make room for our sisters and our brothers in need. We, we may not have uh, all of the money that we need. Amen. You, you may not have a whole lot of money in your pocket to do research to find a cure. But you do have the power of prayer that will release funds uh, out of somebody else's pocket. You may not have the gift of laying, ho- laying hands on the sick that they will recover, but you got the power of picking up your cell phone and calling your sister and brother to encourage them and to let them know that God is still in the business of taking care of our business. I believe, saints, that when community responds to crisis, when we make up in our minds to usher others, into the presence of God. That that is at the time when we will begin to see God's kingdom power truly at work. When we become the ambassadors of God's court. And when we begin to address the needs of others through prayer, through praxis, and through purpose. We will see more of God's healing power flowing through the land. I'm reminded of the in the Bible when Solomon went before the Lord and Solomon requested of God to bless God's people and God responded back to Solomon these words if my people who will call by my name will learn how to humble themselves and learn how to pray to me and learn how to seek my face God says, I got some blessings in store for them. God says, when you learn how to subject yourself to me, when you learn how to get outside of yourself and learn how to see the greater good, God says, I have some blessings in store for the body. God says, I will then hear from heaven. And not only will I hear from heaven, but God says, I will open up heaven's windows. 
and I will pour out blessings among the people. The Bible says that if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Not only will I hear from heaven, but I will restore your land. I will heal your diseases. I will take care of the lupus. I can cure that cancer. But, but you got to learn to hear from heaven. How do we hear from heaven? We got to learn how to get down on our knees and learn how to pray to the Lord. Stop looking at God like God owes you something. But understand today, saints, that all God wants from us is just a praise from our bellies. All God wants from us is just a heart of repentance. All God wants from us is a desire to seek his will. If my people who are called by my name will armor themselves and pray, learn the art of praying, Take time to seek God's will. Study the word of God. Learn to look at God as if God is your only source. If my people who are called by my name aren't you glad today, saints, that the Lord has called you by name. And because he's called you by name, that means we belong to God. And since I belong to God, I can ask for whatever I will. And if God hears me, then I know, saints, that I have the petitions that God has already granted me. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will heal the land. I will forgive their sins. They will be my people and I will be their God. If my people who are called by my name will stop fighting one another and learn how to love one another. If my people who are called by my name will learn how to pray for their brother and their sister. When the community saints stands up to crisis, I believe today that the power of the Lord uh, will be manifest uh, when the community uh, stands up to crisis uh, people receive their healing if my people who are called by my name will lumber themselves and pray seek my face. Then will I, the Lord says, I will hear them. I will forgive them. And I will heal them. We have a responsibility to our loved ones. You have a responsibility to those who are faced with crisis. If nothing more, the least you could do is pray. But watch this. The most important thing you can do is pray. We must take time to get out of the way to usher others into the presence of the Lord so that they might receive the healing, they might receive the forgiveness, they might receive the grace, they might receive the restoration that God has prepared for them. Let the church say amen. amen. This is an invitation to discipleship. Maybe you don't know the Lord Jesus in the pardoning of your sins. Perhaps you may be the one who's faced with an issue and you don't know where else to turn. You've gone and you've tried everything on your own. 
You've tried to resolve the situation in your own power, and you're still faced with the same results. You might even be like this lady. Her situation got worse. We want to pray with you. We want you to know that we're going to lock arms with you. We're going to lock belief with you. And we're going to trust God with you that what you need, what you're looking for, the Lord is able to give you exactly what you need. We want to usher you into the promises, into the power, into the possibilities of God. We want you to know that we're on your team. We're on your side today. We're fighting with you. And whatever that's that's come against you, we're going to put it on notice and let it know that here in the kingdom of God, it has no authority. If I'm speaking to you today, I want you to just come forward. We want to pray with you. Is there one? We want to pray with you today. Yes, there is. To break every chain, we want you to know to break every chain, that we're with you today. To break every chain. When the community comes together, crisis has to flee. When the community makes up its mind yes, that it's going to walk on one accord, the issues that are before us can be resolved. But it takes community. Our heritage. Our heritage. Is founded on community. Even when we were brought to the states. And when they tried to separate our families. We somehow rebuilt through community. We were able to survive because of community we can't be like this group of people in the Bible who wants Jesus so much for ourselves that we suffocate others needs we want to be a part of community here and we want others to know that we will help them to get what they need Let us pray. God, as we are present here today, we thank you, God, for your never failing love towards us. Thank you, Lord, for healing power. Thank you, Lord, for restoration power. Thank you, God, that you are able to reconcile us back into the right relationship with you. God, we come repenting of our sins. We come, Lord God, confessing that there is sin before us. We, pr- we, we come confessing, Lord God, that we've gone outside of your will. We've done things against your will, Lord. So God, we, we lay before you now. We ask that you would forgive us. Restore us and renew us, Lord. God, we thank you That through the blood of your son, Jesus, everything that we've done, Lord God, every sin that we committed, it was washed away. We receive, Lord God, the end of our salvation. Now, God, we ask that you would help us, Lord, to be more concerned about our neighbor, our sister, our brother. That you would help us, Lord God, to to be concerned about the, 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 the issues, the challenges that they're faced with. Cause us to not be so self-centered, Lord God. Cause us not to to be so focused on our own problems, Lord. But help us, Lord, as a community to come together, Lord. And to usher people to your presence. Help us, God, when we go out into this world to seek the needs of others, Lord God. Yes, God, it's okay for us. We we know, God, that that you desire for us to have. But help us, Lord God, so that we can make sure that others have as, as well. Help us, God, to be discerning. Help us to have a heart of compassion, Lord. 
so that when others are, are struggling, when others are in need, we might be attentive to their need. Don't allow us, Lord God, to push others out on the margins, push others out on the outskirts. Don't allow us, Lord God, to be so focused on getting for ourselves that we miss the needs of others. Thank you, God, that you'll open our eyes. Thank you, God, that you'll bring us to a place of community so that when crisis arise, Lord God, we'll be able to walk hand in hand. We'll be able, Lord God, to go together until the need is met. We thank you now, God. That as we leave out of this place, that you're going to continue to work in us. You're going to continue, Lord God, to work through us. The power of of your glory will be experienced even in our own lives. We say thank you, God. And we bless you. This is our prayer. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Every heart together say Say amen. Amen. Say no more Amen. chains. I'm free today. I hear the chains falling. Oh, yes, we do. I feel the chains. Chains falling. Let the church say amen. Let us receive the benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God be majesty, glory, dominion, and power. In the name of Jesus, the church together say amen, amen, amen. Amen. God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. We thank God for you joining us today. We pray that you have been blessed by the worship and the word of God. If you desire to give a contribution to Greater Cleves Church, you can give by cash app. Our tag is the dollar sign, capital G, T, R, capital C, Cleves, and then capital C for church. Again, that's GTR Cleves Church. You can also give through the Givelify app. Just search for us on Givelify. Our church, you will see a picture of the church. You will also see an inset of Pastor Dunbar. Or if you desire, you can either mail or drop off your contribution at the church. That location is 1609. Northeast 48th Street in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Zip code is 73111. Again, thank you for your contribution and thank you for being a blessing to Greater Cleves Church. Until next time, feed your faith. You'll starve your doubts to death. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.